God is passionately and madly and ferociously desirous of every single soul on planet Earth. He is passionately, look at that on the cross, that's his passion. He is passionately seeking us out so that we can be sure to be saved from hell and brought in back home to the kingdom of heaven. St. John Vianney once said that God is so much wanting to save us that he actually wants to save our souls with more passion than a mother would want to save her child from a burning house. Think about that. Your child's in a burning house. A mother, there's no love like that. And yet God even loves us more than that love. He desires all of us to be saved. I really loved hearing about Deacon Rich Calson's uh, homily last week. I couldn't get it online for some reason, but I, people were telling me about it. It was wonderful last week, if you, were, if you remember. And the, the point that people were, were bringing up is, you know, how parents, when they love their child so much, they're willing to just put everything aside. All these, quote, important things are put aside so that they can take care of their, their child. If their child is sick and in need, they will do anything and everything to bring them back to wellness. And what a great image of God for us. God will do anything and everything to bring us into the fullness of everlasting life. Why would God do this? Why, why does God go this route to do this? Well, to quote St. Catherine of Siena, God is pazzo d'amore. Why don't you say that? Pazzo d'amore. You know what that means? Crazy in love. God is crazy in love. And he does things that most people would think are a little bit crazy. Sending his own son to become flesh. Are you kidding me? And to die on the cross? That's pretty crazy. But he's crazy in love with each one of us. And today in particular, we read the long form. It's a pretty long gospel. Because there's three dimensions to it. I didn't want to just do one. I wanted to do all three. Because it has a definite Trinitarian dimension to it. The early church fathers clearly saw this Trinitarian dimension in these three very connected stories. The Good Shepherd, the first one we heard, is of course Jesus, who leaves the 99 for the lost. Uh, the fine lady searching for her lost coin is the church permeated with the Holy Spirit. So we, we, we concentrate on the Holy Spirit and the church, the bride of Christ. And the father in the story of the prodigal son is none other than God the Father, right? I mean, that's a, that's a pretty easy one to see. So let's take them one by one. Jesus Christ is the good shepherd who crazily leaves the 99. It's, it is kind of crazy to leave your 99 healthy ones there and go out into the desert. He goes out there to get this lost little lamb. He, he cares for that shivering, scared, endangered, lost little lamb with all of his heart. And you know, please get rid of the delicate, dainty image of the Good Shepherd. Sometimes you see a little statue of a little delicate boy with rosy cheeks and a little staff like this, you know, a little shepherd's crook. Uh -uh. If you've been to the Holy Land and you've seen Bedouins and you've seen shepherds, they're tough. They're rugged. They have leathery skin. They know how to weather the elements in the cold and the heat. They know how to, uh, to handle ferocious animals. So it's very important for us to see Jesus as this, this all-powerful, all-loving, tough, no-nonsense shepherd that wants to save each one of your souls. I once says at a charismatic gathering, I think 50,000 people, I don't know exactly, and Aunt, Sister Ann Shields gets up and she gave a talk. And, and she talked about when, when a lamb gets lost, 
And I found this quite shocking, actually. She said that a shepherd will grab this little lamb. Oh, I'm so glad to see my little lambski. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. Take the lamb back to the camp and then take a leg and go. <laughs> Ooh, that's pretty harsh, don't you think? Not as harsh as being devoured by wolves. Not as harsh as being left to die in the elements. So what happens? The shepherd breaks the little leg. Well, first of all, the little lamb can't run away then. It has to stay with the shepherd. And also, the shepherd will grab the little lamb and put the little bottle. You've ever seen a little bottle? And just let the little lamb just, you know, take, the, take in the, the nourishment. And at this time, there is a bond that is made between the little lamb and the shepherd. And, the, and at that point, the little lamb's never going to leave the shepherd. And uh, even when his leg is healed, he's going to be just fine. Wow. Do you ever feel sometimes like God has broken your leg? Do you ever feel sometimes like you're being put in the crucible? Do you ever feel that pain? I don't know about you, but some of the most glorious, holy, wonderful times in my life are often preceded by having a broken heart, by having something go wrong in my life where I go, help! The Lord allows us sometimes to be disciplined and to feel this pain so that we will search him out all the more and put him above everything and everyone. So, when the lost lamb is saved, all of heaven rejoices. All of heaven rejoices, it says. What about the woman searching for the coin? Well, the woman searching for the coin is the church permeated by the Holy Spirit. And so we have to be like that woman as the church, filled with the Holy Spirit. We have to evangelize other people. A deacon, Pat Brockhaus, gave a really good homily over at Blessed Sacrament about very simple ways on how we can evangelize people, reach out, connect with them, share the faith with them. I'm not going to get into that whole homily. It's another homily, but our deacons have been doing really good lately. They are, they're always good, but man, I just love these last two homilies in particular. And we need to evangelize. We need to go out and find the lost coins. We find the lost coins and we need to gather them together into the purse. We have to return them to the purse, to the household of God. And when the lost coin is found, all of heaven rejoices. Finally, the father of the prodigal and self-indulgent son literally runs crazily to embrace his son and welcome him back. Uh, this is from my study Bible. I'm going to do an exact quote from the, the footnote on this. Though it was considered unseemly in Jewish culture for an old man to run, the father did not passively stand by waiting for his son to return. He ran to him. This self-humiliation for the sake of the lost indicates the way in which our father comes to us in the person of Christ and runs out to greet us and actively seeks those who stray. And once again, with the lost son being returned, all of heaven celebrates and rejoices. Now, it hit me today as I was listening to the readings, that second readings, Paul says, I used to be arrogant. I used to be cruel and mean. He was named Saul. And then Jesus appears to him and says, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you? I am Jesus of Nazareth. I'm the risen Lord. I'm God. And he had a profound conversion from Judaism to Christianity because Jesus clearly appeared to him. Can you imagine the roar and the jubilation bursting forth in heaven? You thought when Iowa beat when the Cyclones beat the Iowa Hawks, you thought that was a roar. What? It's a million times more. All of heaven rejoices when a soul... And when Paul was converted, wow. But you know what? 
when the least person who you hardly know is converted, the same jubilation happens. So, in conclusion, at every moment of our existence, in every possible way, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is crazily seeking us out to save our souls and bring us back to him. God literally runs out to greet us. We need to recognize that right now. We need to recognize that. And we need to run back to him as well. We run to God in faith. I believe in you. We run to God in hope. We run to God in love. And we throw ourselves into his arms. We throw ourselves into the arms of our God, into the arms of our loving, forgiving, protective, comforting, healing, restoring, joy dispensing, peace imparting God. And when we run and and throw ourselves into his arms, when we do this, all of heaven Amen.